Okay. Uh, yeah, we're we're excited to be back in Pinnacle Bank this weekend. Um, just uh, with with fans, um, we've been enjoying being back uh, there for some practices and and um, getting ready. I told the girls after our close scrimmage that um, we are very excited to be one more week mature before we get the opportunity to show that in front of um, our fan base. But um, just really excited to, to get this group uh, going with this season and, and um, some exciting opportunities lie in front of us. And, and so here we go. Yeah, I think, I mean, we're just still learning. We're still learning and growing and, and finding the way pieces are going to come together and the way um, our team is going to uh, take on different some different um, responsibilities in certain situations and how our rotations are going to um, kind of come together. And so, um, you know, we, we learned, we saw some things with UMKC. Uh, UMKC was a uh, brand new head coach with a lot of new players, so there wasn't a lot of prep. And so, um, um, I thought they showed us a few things that we for sure need to uh, gain some growth with um, as we as we move into this season. Yeah, our ball screen defense was not very good, so uh, we're going to have to really sharpen that up a little bit. And then um, we're we're working on some things, you know, um, just. Uh, I thought UMKC really came in and t tried to pressure and take uh, passes away from us and do some things that um, exposed some certain areas that we need to handle a little bit better. But um, uh, for the most part, I saw some really good things out of our team. And, and so um, we're going to try to build on that as well. Yeah, I mean, the preseason poll doesn't n mean near as much to us. Just um, we, we do feel like it's it's um, nice to have uh, people on the outside being able to kind of validate what we feel like in our locker room, and that is that we can be one of the best teams in the country um, if we take care of business and, and stay healthy and really – um, lean into each other and continue to play for each other um, that we we can be one of the best teams in the country so it's nice to have some validation on that for sure um, uh, but we are going to be way more interested in what the uh, postseason polls say than the preseason Yeah, I think um, it'll be a great opportunity for us to just play against, you know, somebody other than ourselves or our male practice players. Um, I think just getting a different look from a team that is uh, well coached and has a system and has a plan and, you know, to have to be able to adjust to that and, and be ready to um, learn, you know, some things defensively, how to take those things away is a, is a good experience. Getting out in front of your crowd, our kids get so excited um, to play in front of our, our, our home fan base. So sometimes to be able to knock some of the uh, butterflies and jitters out and just the excitement that comes with that. And, you know, we have some players that are, um, you know, new to our program, Maddie Kroll, who's going to be, you know, wearing that Husker uniform in front of fans for the first time. And just, you know, how, how big of an honor that is for a Nebraska native like that to have Nebraska across her chest and, um, you know, some, you know, Callan Hake, you know, one of our freshmen coming in, but players like Naila Dillard, who have been here here for a couple of years but have never been able to suit up in a Husker uniform you know I mean, those guys are just really excited to have that opportunity on Sunday to um, to not just play against another division or another opponent but to do it in front of um, our fans. Yeah, I mean, I think it means a lot to our team. Uh, uh, needless to say, he had their uh, full and undivided attention. I was um, just very grateful and thankful to him for uh, taking time uh, in the middle of a Big Ten conference race for him to come over and really speak to our kids. I thought he had an outstanding message for our group, but just, um, you know, he had their eyes locked and they were um, hanging on every word and, and um, all of us were because uh, why wouldn't you um, when you have a coach like John Cook uh, to be able to kind of pull from? Schools for the first time are in the, in the preseason top 25. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's a pretty sign there's some special things going on in women's sports uh, in this state. And um, it's just uh, a couple of very, uh, a few uh, really, really good uh, women's volleyball programs within our state borders and and um, and also you know some really really good basketball and and Creighton and Nebraska are two of those on the division one ranks but you can just go right down the list and and Concordia and there, there's just a, a state full of really really good women's basketball and so I think that um, we feel we feel like you know it's it's fun to be a part of, and there's just something very special going on in women's athletics in the state of Nebraska and the upper Midwest right now, and, um, and um, we're glad to be able to share that with uh, Husker Nation. Uh, well, uh, you know, this will be the first time that I've had the honor of being able to coach one that is um, is capable of, of trying to do both at this level. But, um, yeah, I think that there's plenty of times, I'm sure, that there are um, phenomenal athletes that choose the sport of volleyball that we wish, man, we'd sure love to have seen what she could have done in a basketball uniform and vice versa. I'm, sh- I'm quite sure there's um, some the flip um, way as well. But um, I think... I think from from our standpoint, um, you can tell with the success that um, all of our Division One programs within the state are having in both women's basketball and volleyball that there's enough talented athletes to go around. Uh, you, you, um, you don't really know what's going to happen in the exhibition, but uh, a lot of unknowns. But what, what's maybe one or two things that you are very confident that your team will, will do? Well? Uh, I'm confident that they're going to fight. Um, they they play hard. They um, get after it. They they uh, practice that way every day. We know that we have to do that at a bare minimum um, to have the success that we want to have for this year. So I think um, we're going to see them get out there and, and lay it on the line and compete and, and get after it. Um, so that's something that I uh, really look forward to. Um, and then Um, You know, I know one thing that, you know, our fans will be able to pretty much guarantee is that will be an opportunity for us to look at a lot of different lineups. So, um, you know, they're going to be able to see uh, everybody get some opportunities and and, um, we're going to look at a lot of different people to be able to see how um, our lineups are starting to mesh together. Yeah. Yeah, um, Trinity was really good. She's been just incredibly solid. Trinity was very efficient. She didn't miss any baskets in that game. She just um, does what she can do. She's uh, real solid defensively. She talks. She communicates. She's um, she does all the little things that somebody that's been in your program for 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 her you know going into her fourth season that you would want and expect even though she hasn't had as many court minutes um, she's just a high IQ player that uh, doesn't try to do things that are outside of her capabilities and just really um, contributes in a lot of ways that may not show up always in the stat sheet but I thought uh, in our close scrimmage the other day Sam Trinity was real efficient and um, and did exactly what our team needs her to do. We are still just making that determination right now, and we've been working several different um, uh, people um, together kind of in that lineup, and there's nothing that has been um, solidified or determined for sure. And um, Trinity's a young lady that's been kind of bouncing around and filling in wherever we might need her position-wise, and she's played this kind of all over the map. Um, So um, that sometimes kind of... uh, lends uh, to what we decide to do with starting lineup based on rotations and things, but um, that will probably be determined on Saturday. There have been a couple of years where you brought arguably your best player off the bench mm-hmm. in, in a desire to like halfway through the first quarter to, to create energy and points right away. Is that something that you consider doing with Maddie or, or, or 
Yeah, I mean, Maddie Kroll is a young lady that we're still kind of working into the rotations and seeing how and identifying kind of how she how she um, complements with Allison and Jazz Shelley and the other guards on the floor. And I think um, lineups and matchups and rotations and when we need to have certain players in the game at certain times. But Maddie is somebody that's quickly earning the trust of every one of her teammates and coaches with just the effort that she puts on the floor. And um, we saw that in our close scrimmage. She was taking charges, getting steals, making things happen for our team. And um, so we're, we're going to make that determination of where's the best place for us to be able to, uh, to have her um, contributing those, those key minutes and, and um, attributes. Yeah, it's um, it almost kind of makes me a little teary eyed and choked up just because, um, you know, of how much uh, she's had to persevere through uh, to to get back out there and be contributing. And um, and so uh, I think all of her teammates feel the same way. They just are. It's just a treat for them. So uh, when she is out there on the court and she's, you know, they um, they really want to pour into her, but also uh, feed off of um, the knowledge of everything that she has gone through to be back out there doing what she loves to do with them and and I think it just means a lot and and our whole team has rallied around that thanks guys